Welcome back, my dear students. So, on this lecture, we are going to be learning about another important object that I want you to learn about for Node JS or Node uh, is the process object. Okay. Now, there is not just one global object. There are many different objects that we have access to, and the process object is something that we have access to no matter where we are. Okay, just like the global, the process object, and along others. So. Let's create a file here just to give you a demonstration. I'm going to explain to you what this is. Okay, so I created a process.js file. So the process object is used to, it has many different functionalities, but one of the functionalities it has, we can read environment information. Uh, we can communicate with our terminal, with our shell here. Basically, we can get information from the current process that's going on right now in whatever file we are executing. For example, uh, let me just do the console here, uh, uh, log something here so you can see it. So this is the object, it's called process. And we have many different properties and objects that we can use here. I'm gonna show you this one, but as you can see, if I scroll down, there are a couple more, right? One of the most common ones is the argument variable here. Okay, so this will give us access to whatever arguments we pass along with that process. For example, if I'm executing this file and I say node process, if I do this just by itself, you can see that I get an array. And that's what this argument variable is, it's an array. And you know, a variable becomes an array when, you know, we use those square brackets or assign it on a variable, a variable name, I mean an array declaration in some programming languages. But as you can see, so it is a variable or an array basically and we have different values here. And the first value is where this process is starting from, right? We are executing it, we are using our executable in node right here this is the path for our executable. And then the second is where this process is, right? What, what process we are executing it from, right? The, uh, the file. So for example, if we pass some type of argument here, for example, a flag saying Edwin Diaz, enter, you can see that this process got a little bigger or the array got a little bigger, right? We have the flag and the value separated. You see that I separated the space with, and it gave us another value. So I can just easily come here and be like this, enter. And you can see that if I don't put a space, it gives me just the flag and the next index is just one value instead of two. Okay, because in this here, you can see that it have a little space there. But anyway, so we're able to communicate with the terminal process, with the terminal and with the current process. What can we do with this? Well, we can, since this is a variable, or let's just call it an array, we can manipulate it, right? And we can do things with it. For example, we can get the flag out of there. We can get the values out. So let's play around with it a little bit, just to show you an example. Let's just say process, and let's just use it just as an array, index off, and we are going to find a flag called user there, and let's just get it out just to see what we get, right? Let's just get the flag out and see what it says. Okay, come back here, enter. And as you can see, it says number two. Now, let's clear that out so it can be a little clear for you. Enter again. And you can see that we are, let's just comment this out real quick. Now we get number two. Can you guess why that is? Remember that here, okay? Remember what we're doing here. 
we got 0, 1, and 2. So I found the index where this value is located. Okay, if we wanted to print the value, we would have to do something like plus one, right, to print the next value, and that would be three. Now, how can we get that specific value? How can we echo that out, or should I say console that, la that out? Right now, we're just getting the index out, but if we want the information, the data, okay, we need to have some type of anchor to it, right? So, we know the data is on index 3. So let's play around with it. Let's use this, the standard output and the standard input. You see, this process object has other objects inside that has properties and, and methods that we can use as well. And one of the objects that we have access to Okay, that is super important when we are dealing with some user um, interfaces and things like that, is the standard output. And the standard outputs allow us to basically communicate with the process that is running. For example, let's play around with it a little bit. And let's just do process that std output. Well, out dot write. Okay, and let's just write something. Let's just say, hello, ask me a question. Okay, and now let's clear this out. We are going to run this and let's just, there we go. It says, ask me a question. Now you see that I get a prompt here. Okay, and I get the name. Well, I get the, this node there. Let me just make a little space here. So I get a prompt here. It's like it's waiting for me to say something or to write something in there. It's waiting for an input. So it wrote something to the console here and it's waiting for me to put some information. When I write some information, let's say Edwin, okay, it says, well, I don't have anything. And there's no command by the name of Edwin. I don't, I, I don't know what you're talking about. So I'm basically running the file here and it's waiting for something but it doesn't understand what I write next. Okay? So we can use another process here. We can use a listener. Okay? So the standard in object is going to allow us to hook into that a listener. And it's going to be a data or data listener. Okay, and that's the name of it. And it's going to receive data here. You can name that whatever you want. Okay, and you can just say answer here. Okay, because it has a callback function that is going to get that information now or that data out. So let's console out that data and or answer. Okay, now we have to kind of play around with the data that's coming back because it doesn't come back as a string. So, um, let's see, we have a function here to string, play around with it a little bit. And so you can see this in action. Okay, let me do control C. Let's clear this out. Let's come back here. Let's execute this. And I'm going to say Edwin Diaz, enter. And you can see that it replied to me Edwin Diaz. So it was able to get the data that we typed in, okay, when we are basically listening to it. So, so here's, here's the thing. We are writing out, right, waiting for data. And then we are using this object, because these are two different objects. The standard output is one object. The standard input is another object. And those objects have properties and have methods that we can use. So this one, is, this method here on is a listener. And the data is the name of that listener. And it has a callback function getting that data back. And we are getting it right here. Well, you can name this whatever you want. We're converting that data to string just to make sure that we get a string and you can see it here but we also have a space here we can also play around with that and trim it down 
okay and then let's just say what is your name or we can just say what is your name here but you get you get my all right so we got that back and we don't have that space anymore it's waiting for more data all right and it keeps waiting and waiting and does not exit because we haven't told it to okay we haven't told this application to exit we can easily resolve that process dot okay exit simple as that so now let's exit let's come out again let's run that and let's just write whatever and now as you can see let's just do it inside here back here enter and now once we answer we put the data it returns it exits the program okay of course you can play around more with this data and you can make an array you can push the data into that array and you can just probably echo out or display all the data you want to do whatever you want with the data I just wanted to show you an example of the process object okay along with other siblings objects that it has or children objects along with their methods and properties that you can use okay this is just an example this is just to show you the power of node okay and again this is huge it has a lot of documentation in the website in the api page in node.js.org so you're welcome to visit it at any time we're going to keep going on with this course because i got a lot more to show you a lot of cool functionalities and um you know you don't need to dive in too much into this I just want you to be aware that this exists and we're gonna probably use this a little more um, later on thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next lectures